In this drawing series, I'll go over the basics and workflow of drafting an architectural floor plan in Revit as part of a drawing set. For the purpose of this video, I created a simple design for a community pool to serve as a tool to guide you through this tutorial. In Revit, floor plans are view specific. For best practice, it's important to create a duplicate view of your drawings. One for adjusting the project model, which I typically name working views. The second view is for two-dimensional drafting, which is a view that will be placed in the drawing sheet. After building the project in 3D using the level one working view, let's switch to the drafting view of level one. For my project, I organize my project browser into discipline. To do that, I created a template for working views. In the working view template, I only have a few of the perimeters checked so that I can control the visibility graphics easily with each of the working views. One of the perimeters I have checked is the discipline. Here I have all the working view placed in the coordination. To organize your project browser, right click the view. Select Browser Organization, check Discipline. Of course, there are other schemes you can use for your own workflow. I just like everything organized by discipline in my projects. Click Apply to see the update in the Project Browser, then OK to finalize the adjustments. Now let's go back to Level 1 Drafting View. Make sure that you assign a scope box if you don't have one already. To do that, go to View tab, Scope box, draw the area you want to show, make sure to name your scope box. To adjust the scope, you can adjust the height in the properties, or you can open a working 3D view and drag the handles to adjust the scope box manually. Now let's apply the scope box to level one in the properties. Select the scope box we just created, then click apply. Now let's create a new sheet for level one. In the project browser, right click on sheets, new sheet, Select a title block. For this project, I will use a custom title block that I already created, a D22 by 34. I use the 22 by 34 full sheet title block so that I can easily print my drawings to half sheet, which is a 11 by 17. If you already have all the project information, the title block should update automatically to rename your title block, right click on the sheet, type the name. For A101, I will title it Overall Floor Plan. Now let's place the level one drafting view by dragging the view to the sheet. Click the view to uncheck the crop region visibility. Click the view title to adjust. Then click the drawing view to adjust the length of the line. Check the drawing scale. I have my drawing in 116. In a different tutorial, I will go over on how to create an enlarged plan with a larger scale for a more detailed drawing. Now that we have level one floor plan placed on a sheet, let's edit the drafting view. You can double click the view in the sheet to make edits, but for me, I'm going to double click the view itself in the project browser to edit. Make sure your drafting view is associated with a view template to maintain drawing consistency. To edit the template, go to properties, click the view template. For example, when adjusting poche in the floor plans, edit the value for the model perimeter. Select walls. In the cut pattern, select the pattern you want. 
For the scale, I have the floor plan, which is 1 16th. It is best to show it as a solid fill. Then you can choose the color. Because my plan is relatively simple and drawn in a small scale, which is 1 16th, I'll use black as my fill to highlight the walls in the floor plan. You can also adjust the line graphics and the projected lines of the walls, which is dependent on your design and or graphic standards. Now let's add pattern to our plans to differentiate materials. For example, let's zoom in to the locker rooms. I would like to create a material change to the floor finish. When I model the floor, I drew it as one single slab. In order to change material, what we need to do is to split the floor. To do that, go to Modify tab, Split Face, select the floor slab you want to split. For my floor plan, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Then I'm going to go to Modify tab again, then select Paint. Now it's going to give us an option on what material we want to apply to the locker room floor finish. I'm going to select Tile, then Paint the locker room floor. To adjust the material projection, go to Manage, Materials, select the material you want to adjust. For me, I want to change the tile pattern size. Click the foreground pattern. I'm going to select the 8 inch tile pattern. You can also create a custom material pattern here. For best practice, make sure you duplicate first before making edits. But I'm satisfied with the 8 inch tile pattern, so I'm going to click OK. Now let's align the pattern. Type the shortcut AL for align, then align the tiles to a wall. When adding information into your drawings in Revit, you can also add two dimensional components. Again, in the locker room, let's add detail to our shower. Go to architecture. Then component, place a component, and let's select the shower stall 2D. Since the component is 2D, this component will only appear in 2D views. You can also import DW files to use as line work in your drawings. For example, in the insert tab, you can either link or import, but since I'm not making any further adjustment to the DWG file, I will select import for my project. To adjust the line weight and style of the DWG file inside Revit, select the file, then click explode in the modify tab. Now I can individually change the lines. I can adjust the line type and weight specific to my drawings. Now let's talk about drawing tags. Tags in drawings help visually identify different model elements in the view. It also allow each element to be associated with information in order for us to create a schedule in Revit. So let's start tagging rooms. For large open area, you can add a room separator to differentiate areas. To do that, in the room and area, select room separator, and now draw where you want to separate the area. Then you can add the room for each of the area you want. You can edit the information included in the room tag, for now, I only want the room numbers. 
Now let's input additional tags into our drawings. In the Annotate tab, select by tag category. The nice thing about this tool is that when you hover to an element, it automatically recognizes its category. It is my preference to have the leader unchecked. You can also select tag all. For my drawing, I will select doors and windows. And that will automatically add the tags for all the doors and windows in this specific drawing view. You might need to adjust some of the tags so that it is visible in the drawings. Now let's start adding dimension into the floor plan. Dimensionings are crucial in your drawings. However, make sure you don't over dimension. For more detailed dimensioning, use an enlarged drawing and or a detailed drawing. Make sure that you have the dimension rounded to the nearest 1 8 for tolerance. To adjust the rounding and units of your dimension, go to Manage tab, Units. You can also customize the project dimension by editing the type. For visual clarity, I'm going to change my project dimension to red. For my overall floor plan, I'm going to dimension between grids and overall dimensions. Each project is different, so make sure to dimension key elements from known dimensions. For example, I'm going to add dimension to the face interior wall of the reception from a grid line. You can repeat the process to additional key elements in your drawings. And that's how you get started in drafting floor plans in Revit. For the next tutorial, we'll go over on how to create section and elevation drawings in Revit.